Alrighty, it's been a couple of months since I did a video on Unreal 5.1, had a lot of updates since, so I thought I would take some time to go through all the new rendering features and improvements in Unreal 5.1. So we're going to start off the bat with Lumen. So Lumen's got a few things, uh, support for foliage or improved support for foliage. I couldn't really find a quantifiable difference between 5.1 and 5, but what it does have is a new translucency, the new translucency reflections. So we're going to have a look at that first. So that's first enabled in the project settings. And then after that, you can go into the post process settings and under high quality translucency, you can tick that and we get this. So it's running based on the uh, distance field meshes. So if we go to lumen and lumen scene, then not, no, sorry, not that one reflection view. That's the one. It's running off this, so this is what you're going to see reflected, which is not that fantastical. Uh, one thing you can do to help is the Lumen Scene Detail under Global Illumination. I know that's a bit backwards thinking about it because it's the Global Illumination thing, but ramping that all the way up gives us a little more color definition in some things. And if I go back to lit, there we go. So there is a fallback for screen space, so you can see it as it transitions across, which Obviously that will always look nice and high quality, but the Lumen one, not so much. So one way you can improve this is by enabling ray tracing, which then doesn't use the fallback scene, but uses the actual geometry because it's ray tracing, but not everyone has access to that or that might not be fast enough. So at the moment, this is what gets reflected. Now, when you get really close, it does update to a much higher resolution, but I'm not sure what setting controls this like ring around with a because this looks like the scenes distance field and then this is the individual objects distance fields and i'm not sure exactly which setting does uh increases this distance all right one more thing is lumen now officially supports end display so it didn't before but in 5.1 it will which is really handy Alrighty, the next improvement is to the path tracer so the path tracer originally started in unreal 4 as like a ground truth reference but uh since then has been updated a couple of times to sort of bring it in line with a proper production renderer so make sure you have ray traced enabled on your scene and then it's a matter of simply going lit and path tracer so the biggest improvements are it supports decals and fog which i think means it's complete or very close to being complete at least uh, fog is probably the biggest one that was holding me back from using it now all the settings for it are stored in the post process volume down the bottom there you go path tracing so we've got max bounces this is how many times a ray bounces around the scene by default it's 32 you want to drop that down to eight or even four because there's no need to bounce something an unlimited number of times samples per pixel is the noise you want to keep this high filter width is to do with the anti-aliasing i turn this down to make things a bit sharper We've also got, uh, it works with emissive materials, so emissive materials will just light things up by default, which is really cool. Path exposure is for the fireflies, so if you get really bright pixels, then you can turn this value down, which will help. We also have the option to use a referen reference depth of field, so instead of the depth of field being the post effect that Unreal usually does, this will be a ray trace depth of field, which allows sub-pixel blurring, I guess. We also have if we want to use the atmosphere or not. So off and then on. So we will collect the atmosphere color as well to contribute to the final scene. Also supported now is light functions. So if you make a blinking light or something like that, it'll also be supported in the path tracer. Now, one more thing is the movie render queue has a few more options for it as well. So if I go ahead and find this scene. So to render with the path tracer, what we can do is I'm going to delete those two so we can do uh, EXRs, whatever you prefer, then you want to choose path tracer in here. So we also need the anti-aliasing setting. Oh, not burning. Anti-aliasing, there we go. So in the path tracer, we have this new option as well for reference motion blur. So what this does is instead of, it basically, it puts denoising at the very end of the render instead of denoising passes and then combining them to make the motion blur which should create cleaner motion blur so we can go ahead and click that now anti-aliasing is how that we is how we control the path tracer so spatial sample count represents how many samples we take so if i put 1024 then we'll take 1024 per pixel 
Now, the temporal sample count is to do with motion blur. So upping this will then have sort of four motion blur steps. So we'll get in rather than a straight line between say an object going in an arc, we'll actually get an arc shape. Now this is then multiplied by the spatial count. So then this scene would then be taken at four, 40, 96 samples. So then you may want to drop this down. One thing to note is that you do want a very high sample count because the denoiser creates artifacts and doesn't denoise things evenly. So if you have a really low sample count, although one frame might look clean, the, the variance between frames will be so large you'll get this like weird blob moving across your screen as you're watching back the video. Okay, while we're in the movie render queue, a few more updates. So if we add the camera node, we now have this option to render all cameras. What this does is allows us, if we have multiple cameras in our sequence, even though one only one would be the camera track, if we have lots of cameras, it'll render from all of those views at the same time. This means any randomized effects, such as particles, simulations, the water, the smoke, the cloth, is going to be identical from each camera view. However, this will take a long time as it swaps between all the different cameras. However, if for whatever reason you need all your um, effects to be identical between camera views, then this is the option. Another new update to the Movie Render Queue is if we enable the Movie Render Queue Additional Render Passes plugin and go to a sequence, what we have now is the ability to render out a panoramic catcher. This creates a equirectangular, so a 360 image, using Movie Render Queue, and so you don't need to use the plugin anymore, which is really handy. Now we have some options here on how to split up, both in horizontal and vertical steps, our render. So increasing these numbers causes less distortion, but will create a longer render. We also have the option under advanced to allocate a history per slice. Um, this allows things like temporal anti-aliasing, denoising, and other effects to work. That setting is also now added in the high resolution setting here as well, history per tile. This means any temporal effects will now work using these tiled modes. So render using the panoramic capture and rendering to EXRs, we can create a HDR animated HDRI really fast in Unreal. Another new improvement is the ability to more easily play back image sequences, more specifically EXR sequences, because they're optimized. So Unreal has a couple of new tools. We have under image media here, we have the ability to process image sequence into EXRs and enable things like mip mapping or tiling, which also incre increases the play speed so we can play it real time. Now to add one, uh, we simply right click the content browser and go media and then we want image media source. Inside here we can simply select, uh, I have gotten the original Nian Cat and converted it in media encoder to an EXR sequence. Under advanced we can do a frame rate override, I'm going to choose 30, go ahead and save it. Now to use this we simply drag and drop it out into the world. Just like that. Then all we need to do is just hit play here and we get, hopefully, a cat. There we go. I'll let you imagine the audio that goes with that. So this makes it a lot easier to use these, um, you know, media sequences for various things, whether that's um, for virtual production reasons or you've rendered out some offline stuff that you want to include in your scene. I've done that a couple of times for smoke assets. So this is a nice and handy way of playing back those things now. And it's running in real time and it's just one thing you drag and drop. No, not you don't you don't need to create the media player and the playlist and the materials and all that now. It just does it all automatically for you. A new improvement to end display, not only does it work with Lumen now, but you also don't need to use switchboard to launch it. So if you only have one cluster node, like one computer running it, or if you're just doing testing on your local computer, then you can go ahead and enable, there is a new plugin called end display launch. And that just adds this little button here, which lets you, um, you can switch the end display config if you've got multiple in your level, or you can switch nodes if you're testing different nodes out. But all you have to do is just hit play here, and this will immediately launch end display on your computer. 
I haven't set up this config correctly, so it's launched on my other monitor. However, we can immediately now launch and display without using Switchboard, which I think is a, uh, a really nice feature, um, and I thought I would touch on it. So the last thing we're going to explore now is the strata materials. So I briefly touched on this last time, but I'm going to have a look again. The, it, there's a big f warning on it that it's changing very rapidly, so not to use it just yet. Uh, and it will be in an experimental state when it releases in 5.1 and you shouldn't really use it in 5.1 either just test it but don't actually use it for anything because it's going to change and that means everything you do in 5.1 will break by the time 5.2 comes out so go ahead and enable strata materials like so alrighty was a bit of a long comp shader compiling but now we can go into a material and have a look at the new strata stuff so if you remember strata uses bsdfs which i looked up the definition for last time but that puts it in line with other render engines cycles v-ray octane all those goodies arnold as well i should mention so it has a few more things than when we last looked at it so we've got a couple more bsdfs so we've got eye hair clear coat, single layer water, slab, unlit, and volumetric cloud. We also have some building blocks. These are just macros of existing things. So like the metal one I click on, if I double click it, it's actually just this slab macro with certain things exposed. So the slab one is probably the most common BSDF you'll use. So if I grab it, Strata Slab BSDF, this is built, it looks like it's based off the Disney's Disney principal BSDF, base color, edge color, metallic, specular, roughness, normal, emissive, roughness, some screens, uh, subsurface, scattering, thickness, fuzz, all those good things. So this is probably what you will use the most of. However, there is like the hair, the water, <clears throat> and those are other goodies in case you need them as well.